All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna go over some Arctic Cat APV valves. I had some people ask me how these are disassembled and cleaned. Uh, they look a little bit more intimidating than they really are. But um, once you dig into them, they're not really that complicated. So the first thing that you'll want to do is remove these four cap screws, these flanged cap screws. And that will allow you to pop this cover off. And obviously see it's the APV Arctic Cat Power Valve. That's what APV stands for is Arctic Power Valve. And what will happen is you will want to remove those 10 millimeter bolts, like I said. And what you'll find on the inside is this assembly here. Well, this assembly has three... These are, these are socket heads, screws, bolts. You know, they're reverse of a cap screw. So they're a socket. And a lot of people refer to them as Allen's. Um, Allen screws and this assembly here has a plate that has three of those there's two on the sides one two and three so you want to remove those and you have to remove those before you can even get this assembly out so once this cap comes off you'll see these here you'll have to twist the cap one way or the other to get to the the each of, of those three screws so once you do that if it's been a while it might feel like these don't even want to come out but they're just gummed up pretty bad i've already actually wiped these just a little bit but you'll need to pull this whole assembly out and then once you pull the whole assembly out you have this pin here and it's the pin is what holds them in. It, the pin only goes in one way. I mean, you can put it in the other way, but it's got a little lip, a little flange on it, and that flange won't allow it to go back in the right way. So you just pop that side off, and then the other side pops right off as well. So now you have this one assembly here. Now, as far as this piece right here, you have this pin. Now this pin has a flange on it. And if you look on the inside of this piece here, you can barely see, and you can see that little indention. It's a little circle there. Well, this side doesn't have that. So that's what I was saying. This pin only goes in one way. Because if you don't have it in the right way, I'm sorry, it'll stick out too far on the other side. And you won't be able to slide these two valves down here over it. You'll be able to get the one side on, but not the other. So you want to make sure that you keep this aside. There's also on the bottom of the keeper there, you can see that line going this way. Well, you have to have that lined up as well, because if you don't, it won't fit it you have to line it up you know as close as you can and then it'll see like i'm trying to put it in there now and it doesn't want to go so you have to make sure that's flat and lined up enough and it'll push that out of the way so as far as taking the other piece out the spring needs to be pulled back it's kind of a pain to do but it's almost as bad as the stinking it's almost worse Then trying to take the valves out. And it would probably be easier if you loosened up the, the cables themselves, which is really how you want to do it. <laughs> I mean, if you can get away with it, 
just clean this all out real well. You know, if you don't want to have to readjust your valves, then just spray in here with some carb cleaner. You can use some compressed air to wipe it out or to, to spray it out. You can use a, a rag, you know, or a little old toothbrush, scrub all that. And then you don't have to worry about screwing around with resetting your power valves. It's not really that hard of a, you know, thing to do, but. So as far as cleaning these, those, we can get back to that. So we'll take you back over to the bench here. Okay, so we're back at the bench. And we got these power valves. And you want to keep them in order, left to right. And they come apart. I mean, they're, they're pretty easy to dis disassemble. I mean, they just slip through these slots. And that's what you have. So I wouldn't be too, you know, intimidated. You can see which side was riding outward and inward. You have the round portion of this. And then you have the H or rectangle portion of this from the keeper in there. So, I mean, if they're pretty gummed up, there's a couple things you can do. I mean, you can put it in a parts washer. If you don't have a parts washer, you can get some brake clean and a wire brush. I'll loosen up that junk. I mean, these things are pretty hard anyway. And what I did with the ones on my 800, I just took a wire wheel to them. I mean, the big thing's getting up all, getting all the the gummy, the gummy stuff off them. Then you can take a little wire wheel to the inside if you got a boring wire wheel. I mean, most of this gummy stuff will come off, but it's the carbon that really gives you the problem. When it starts to come off, it just gets thick and real gummed up. When you say gummed up, it's like caked on there. this <laughs> it's gonna be kind of hard to get into there Clean it out as best you can. Looks like someone took a file to this one. I might take all these edges off. Someone said to just leave them and put them back in, but I don't know. So that's pretty much the process. Just 
get the major junk off. Clean them back up. I mean, I'm using brake cleaner here. It, you know, gets a good portion of the oily, nasty stuff off. That's probably another hole you could clean. It looks like there's threads in there. I've never messed with these ones before, but huh, that's interesting. But either way, yeah, they go in there like that and just clean them up best you can. That's basically it, folks. If somebody's got a better way of doing this or something, let me know. You might be able to put them in like a soda blaster and clean them up, but... That's not going to etch the metal here. This stuff's pretty hard. Mm, this, I don't think it matters, but I keep everything. I try to keep everything in order. That way you know what goes where. You don't have any problems with things wearing or seating or riding improperly.
So, uh, yeah, other than making sure that all these parts are clean, like, uh, you know, got the gunk off them. Get a fresh can. So they look more complex than they are because they're not one big solid valve. Well, I was able to get that off. And all I did is I pushed, I pushed this down and then I was able to grab the spring and the keeper and pull it off to the side and then that just slid right out and then the spring came off. So there's that. Well, worked on that side. This other side's really loose. So I don't know what's going on there. Probably have to redo, re uh, set these anyways. man
So these are the other two that you want to undo. keeps getting turned off autofocus keeps getting turned off So I can clean that. So that's that. Like I said, you got three of these on each, so there's five to or six total. gunk off them. So now I'm just going to clean these up a little bit. Oh, whoops, wrong stuff. All right, so I'm just going to clean these cables up a little bit. There is an O-ring right here also. This one doesn't look like it's, it's got a little piece. You can see some of it's Let's see if I got another one. It's 
There's that one. <clears throat> yeah, see, they're a little grimy. I mean, they just got the junk all over them. Oh, that one almost feels like it's unhooked. That could be wrong, though. That's where it should be, I believe. But this one looks bad, too. I'm going to take both of these and see if I got a... another one. All right, so I went ahead and cut another gasket for this one. Just out of your stereotypical gasket paper. But as far as these go, they seem like they're pretty like fat and unique, so I'm just going to trim up the garbage on them. Because otherwise they feel, you know, they still feel soft and pliable. All right, so this engine was actually out of the sled. Um, ended up getting a new top end. So now I'm getting ready to put the power valves back in. So we got blue Loctite. the far side first and you have this spring here I want to make sure the springs all the way over and I'm going to adjust these valves anyways as far as the cables <laughs> these two screws they're little allen flanged allen heads and you just put a little bit of Loctite on each. Manual says six and a half to nine and a half foot pounds. Just snug it up. This piece faces upward. You can see that there is a recessed portion there. So you wanna put the spring in, compress it down and then slip the take the cap off of the servo okay oh yeah see so this one Neither of these were in, what the heck? So, let's see here. Oh yeah, now I got a lot more room. I'll make sure you get that spring in there. That slips on over. So that's what you're looking at right there. And then the next thing that has the recess in it, and you want to make sure that slot on the top is straight to where you can feed this thing in there properly. Just like that. So it's going to be sticking out a little bit on one side. But they go in like this, folks. Come 
Come on, baby. There we go. What's weird is I could have swore that I took them out and they were the uh, they were installed the other way. Just a moment of truth, folks. Man, they feel like they even move better. Should be it, and we'll torque these babies in. Look out. What did I say, seven last time? Thanks for checking out the video. If you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Hit the alert bell so you guys are notified of future updates of this video or about this series and more. And it really helped me out if you guys could like the videos on the channel. That always does good for the algorithms on YouTube. And uh, you know, if you guys have any comments, stop by, say hello, offer some friendly advice. And uh, you know, I'm always down for, for talking. So thanks a lot again for stopping by. We'll see you guys in the next video. So come on back, take care, and God bless.